Hello everybody and welcome back to episode 31 of the video series in which we make a an entire video game from scratch in the C programming language. Before we get started, um, just a couple of comments that I received since last time. Um, one commenter says, I notice when you need to change names, you often do it manually. Visual Studio has a really great replace tool that uses IntelliSense to find all the references and lets you rename them all at once. I think it's F2 on Enterprise and Control plus R plus R on Community or just right click and use the context menu. So yeah and I think he's referring to um, actually I don't know exact what exact example he's referring to but you remember that one time when I was making um, when I was making that that text uh, blit string to buffer function and I needed to change a variable name in there and then I had to like copy the entire function and I copied it out of Visual Studio and into Notepad++ uh, and then did a find and replace there and then copied and pasted it back into Visual Studio. Um, so yeah I think Visual Studio has a better way of doing it and I just don't really know what it is. What's up to do? Yeah, you can rename it, and um, I guess it will go and find it throughout your entire solution. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, I never really used it, though, because I guess i um, kind of stuck in my ways. Um, but I'll try to use it next time I rename a variable. I'm sure that won't be the last time that I need it. So I will give it a try next time. All right, so one other thing is someone created a post on the C programming subreddit on reddit.com and they mentioned me um, and this video channel and they said it was really cool and you know they had nice things to say about this video series so thank you very much uh, for those kind words and uh, they had a question though is that they they were inspired by this video series to create or basically create um, Win32 GUI applications. And um, essentially this project, this video game that we're working on, um, yeah of course we do use the bare minimum amount of Win32 uh, just to get the game window up and running. Um, however we're not really making good use of the Win32 uh, windowing system or Win32 API. Uh, a good example would be, you know, we don't even use, we don't even catch uh, WM paint messages here because uh, we don't need them. And in most all other Win32 GUI applications, the the uh, WM paint window messages are very important to catch. Um, there's a lot of other examples too of why this project in particular is not a very good example of a Win32 GUI application. However, there is something else that I wrote that is a better example. If you go to my GitHub page, uh, this app right here, which I simply wrote as a replacement for the built-in Windows snipping tool right there, so I mean, I actually I have it. I use it myself, and it captures um, screenshots, you know, just like the snipping tool. And then you can use the highlighter, you can use the box, and you can change the color of things if you uh, want to change the color to something else. Um, you can also do text. You can do it in any sort of font. You know, all that kind of stuff. So, this app right here is a better example um, of how to do stuff in the Win32, uh, how to do GUI in the Win32 API, um, simply because, you know, there's a lot more. There's like buttons and drop down menus in here. There we go. And see, the, here's my WM Paint example where I. I do need to handle this particular window message. So anyway, all I'm saying is go check out this project if you um, 
are looking for more Win32 GUI inspiration type stuff. All right, that does it for the comments. And uh, so we're back here. Um, we're going to continue on. I think last time, yeah, last time we were working on this character naming screen. Let's go ahead and fire it up just to see what it looks like. Um, yeah, so we need to center this and, and get this all, all nice looking. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go to menus first of all. And I've been getting these spam phone calls from New Mexico all day long, just repeatedly. And it's some automated voice message system telling me about my Apple iCloud account. Which I don't even use Apple iCloud. Anyway. Okay, so we need to be a little smarter about this, centering this in the screen. So this row, this first row of letters, is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 characters wide, including the spaces. Um, so let's see, we do, we do, game res width divided by two minus oh this isn't gonna work is it I can't um, I can't use str length here in the um, declaration of this global variable Um, so what I'm going to do instead is just do the calculation. Okay, so 25 characters, and each character is six pixels wide. That's 150 total uh, characters. However, These spaces need to be at least one more one more pixel wide to accommodate the cursor like that. There needs I want there to be some black space. Um, so let's try how many spaces do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so we have 12 spaces at 8 pixels each. And then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 letters at 6 pixels each. Okay, so that's a total of 100 and 74 pixels. Twelve spaces at eight pixels each, plus thirteen letters at six pixels wide. 174 divided by 2. Alright, let's give that a try. I need to copy and paste. Just, uh, wait a second. thinking about this all wrong, aren't I? Three eighty four divided by two minus 
174 divided by 2. Okay, that means we start off at a pixel at 105. next character will be plus 8. wonder what that looks like. There were build errors, but it doesn't tell me what they were. It's fascinating. Task was canceled. What are you talking about? Uh, let me restart Visual Studio. Background tasks are still running. Thinking, okay, fine. Um, obviously, that's uh, super wrong. So we forgot to accommodate for. Oh. We forgot to, what did we forget to do?
45. Three oh five, three twenty five, three forty five. I know that's still not going to be perfectly centered, but uh, we'll figure it out. Let me go to draw character naming. And this needs to be much higher up. And then let's go to process player input. Okay. Okay, so the process player input for this menu is going to be really pretty strange um, because if we're here on A um, and we press the up key, what do we want to do? Do we want to not do anything or do we want to wrap around to like lowercase n or uh, back or what should we do? Likewise, if we're on A and we press the left key, what should we do? Should we just stay there or should we wrap around uh, to capital M or what? Um, I'm not really sure. So, hmm. All right, we'll just say. if g menu character naming that selected item is greater than 12 which means if if the selected item is greater than 12 that means this is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 so if it's greater than 12, then we know that they're at least on the second row. If it's greater than 12, I think we, what we can do is just take 13 away from the selected item. That will probably need some adjusting later on, but let me just move on to the down key. Intellisense is already broken, it's a good sign. Same thing here. So if it's less than what? It's 
12, 24, 36, 48. We should play sound here too. G sound menu navigate. So this should get our up and down um, working with the exception of the OK button and the back button. So let's see. Let's do left. Um, we'll do F. Uh, G menu. Character naming dot select item equals zero or dot selected item equals thirteen or G menu. Naming dot selected item equals twenty six or G menu character naming dot selected item equals thirty nine. That means we're going to wrap around. So G menu character naming dot selected item plus twelve. Else, if G menu character naming dot selected item. Um, what is the index of the back button? No, I don't want to do that. Let's move on to the right button. Right key is not G game input. Come on, G game input dot. Right key was that. We're going to do the same thing here. If G. In fact, I'm going to copy on this. right here. Only well, I'm going to change this to if it's 12 or 25 or 38 or 51 
then wrap it around the other way. All right, let's see what that looks like. Okay, making progress. Else. Okay, if it equals, let's just try G menu. Item. Oh, sorry, left. Yeah. Plus G menu. After naming dot selected item plus plus. Okay. Let's check it and see what it looks like. It's looking pretty good. We can cycle through there. We can, we can cycle through them backwards. It's looking pretty good so far. I keep hitting the escape button, wanting to exit from this the scene but I can't so let's do if G game input dot choose key is down and not G game input dot choose key was down um, then we execute the action right G menu character naming dot items with an index of G menu character naming dot selected item action we're going to call it function okay before we continue I want to get the rest of these things centered like that looks a bit better still not right though still not in the center but it's getting closer If I, I wonder if I did this. I'll take a screenshot. Go to paint.net.
Okay, so for example, if we measure the distance, uh, I suppose it should be white. Seven hundred and thirty-eight. Seven hundred and thirty-eight pixels in length. And what do we have over here? Seven hundred and forty-four. That's interesting. I'm going to use my snipping tool. Go to paint.net. Pixels, white, anti aliasing disabled. Okay, that's a hundred and twenty three pixels. That's 124 pixels, so I'd say that's about centered. On the other hand, A starts at, let's see, that's 125. And it ends at... Two twenty eight, two forty, two fifty 
to 64. Two, forty-four, one sixty. Sorry, one fifty-six, one sixty-eight, one eighty. and 264. I wonder if you can copy and paste like this. What if I copy that and paste it right here? If this works, I'm going to be quite tickled. It one twenty, one thirty two, one forty. I think it did. I think it kind of did, with the exception of for some reason two sixty four was lost. So that's pretty awesome. Let's try that one more time. That's really close to being centered. This needs to be at 120, I guess. And OK needs to be at like 252. Try 258. Perfect. Okay.
actually, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do that inside the action. Okay. It's greater than 12. So what if the up key was pressed and the selected item is less than 12? I feel like we should probably then wrap around to either the back or OK buttons. G menu, naming dot selected item equals. I don't know what the index of the back button is. So this is a 12. 24, 36, 48. So is it 49? Let's see. No. 49, 50, 51, 52. pretty well. Aha! And we crashed. We crashed because we went outside the bounds of the array. Uh, let's go back to process player input. Character naming. Uh, I have some I have an idea. Let's do uh, back button equals fifty two. M, right? Twelve. It's just to make the code a little bit more readable.
So what is the index of lowercase n? It's going to be 0, 13, button is Menu character name got selected item is greater than or equal to thirty nine. case in then Still a little bit wonky, but that's okay. We'll keep working on it. Uh, let's change gears a little bit though and go to. I want to go to the action um, menu item character naming add. So when we add a character, I'm, when we add a letter to the character's name we're going to be adding it to where is our hero data structure here he is so it's a buffer that is 12 characters long however I think I might restrict the uh, characters name to like eight characters sort of an arbitrary decision I mean if if I'm thinking about I'm thinking of I'm imagining like in the future you know his name is gonna pop up in dialogue boxes and stuff and it has to it can only be a certain amount of length or else it's gonna um, run off the end of the dialogue box or it may not work properly with word wrap um, things like this so I think it's best to keep it pretty short and in fact, I'm going to make it a buffer of nine. That'll be a character name of 
eight characters plus one uh, null at the end of it. So we're going to do if if our hero uh, if string length of what is our hero? Is it not G hero? It's G player dot name. If that is less than eight, then we are going to add a few ways. STR cat. We're going to concatenate this letter onto the end of the player name and the source will be G menu character naming G menu character naming dot selected item name. name Let's do it this way. Instead of using STR cat, uh, we will just assign this value directly. I think I might have forget. I forgot items on that last uh, when I was doing it the other way. Um, G menu character name dot selected item name zero. I think that's right. That should work. The game sound. Uh, G sound menu choose. And since we're here, we'll go ahead and do the back button as well. If our length of G player dot name is less than one. Um, that means we probably mean to back out of the entire character naming uh, screen, and we should probably just go back uh, to G 
previous game state equals current game state and current game state equals game state title screen. Okay, so the idea is that if I hit the back button, it should take it should take the last character off of the character's name, the last letter off of the character's name, unless there are no characters or letters in the character's name, in which case we should back out of the character naming screen entirely and go back to the title screen. Typing G hero, G player dot name minus one equals um, zero. You could do it um, since we're assigning, since we are assigning to a character buffer. Um, sometimes it may, and you could type, you could do that. Um, doesn't really matter. But if the compiler or code analysis complains that hey, you're assigning a number uh, to a character data type, um, it might help to wrap it in the single quotation marks right here instead um, but technically it doesn't matter uh, you know uh, a null byte is a null byte is a null byte doesn't matter what data type it is um, all right I think that is it we need to go back to draw draw character naming I want to draw this on the screen And I want to draw it somewhere between. Let's see, blit. Oh, actually, for each, for each, uh, for each unit, at zero. There is less than um, eight. I guess we can be a little bit more descriptive with the name of this with the name of this counter. Um, if g player dot name equals zero. And we are going to blit string to buffer a an underscore using the G six by seven font, uh, specifying uh, text color, and then the x coordinate will be. Here we go again. Uh, game res. No, no, no. That's not right. That is not right. Um, we'll have to center that later. Uh, and the y coordinate will be something like, let's see, 16, 32. Let's try 48 and see what happens. Plus letter times six. Else, if it uh, if it is not zero, then we're going to print the actual letter. Let's 
run it and find out. Okay. Seems to work okay. So if I hit the back button while there are no letters, then it just takes me back to the title screen. Oh. Oh my. All right, let's, um, let's go back to process player input. We're almost done with the uh, character naming screen. All we're doing now is just finishing touches, polishing,
that also reminds me what I think I want to do is I think I want to I think I want to disable input for the first like half second of each game state because I noticed just now that if I go back 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 and you know if I hit back one more time it's going to take me back to the title screen but then I can immediately hit enter again and it takes me back here and which is kinda of weird right so I think while the fading effect is going on I should disable um, player input okay so basically uh, we're practically done with the character naming screen at this point I um, have a little bit of work left to do uh, with getting these things completely uh, perfectly centered uh, and there's a couple of weird oddities like for example when I'm on the OK button and I hit the right arrow it makes a noise even though the arrow doesn't move um, and that is incorrect behavior Um, so the, just little things like that and and that's another weird one like if I if my cursor is on the OK button and then I press the up arrow it takes me back to lowercase o and I have no idea why um, I guess because oh I, I do know why it's because I'm taking away uh, 12 from it or something like that um, which doesn't work when you're on this row so that makes total sense so I have some little things like that to uh, finish uh, and then we'll be completely done with the character naming screen and when you hit OK what should happen is we're finally going to go back into the overworld uh, game state and then we're going to be we're going to be well on our way then ladies and gentlemen so do I have a If G game input escape key is down and not G game input dot escape key was down, then we want to do we just want to do um, see what that does yeah it works perfect because I kept wanting to hit the escape key uh, instead of manually pressing the back button every time um, what else what else character naming back Game sound G. G sound when you choose. works well so we're probably just about out of time um, made some good progress on the character naming screen I think finally next time we'll be able to um, get back into the overworld which 
will be a nice change of pace because I know we've been working on menus for several episodes now. Um, but next time, if we get into uh, if we get into the overworld, um, yeah, it's like I just said, it's going to be a change of pace because we're going to have to start talking about tile maps, and we're going to have to start drawing a lot of tiles, and um, it's going to be a lot different. Anyway, I'm going to call it for today. Uh, as always, thank you for watching. If you would like to see me continue working on this uh, video series and you want to see me finish this game, um, please like and subscribe and tell your friends and all this kind of stuff. If you have any comments or questions, uh, please don't hesitate to leave comments and questions on the videos. I will address them in an upcoming episode. Also, don't forget that we have a GitHub repository uh, to go along with this. I keep it updated in step with these episodes so that you can clone the repository and follow along at home. And that is all I have for today. So until next time, thank you for watching. Uh, see you next time. Bye.